Hello, Metalheads. This is uh, Martin Van Drunen from Asfix, and you're listening to the Dan Chan Show on Hard Rock Hell Radio. Hey, Martin. How's things in Netherlands at the moment? Pandemic, etc., etc. Hello, Daniel. Uh, boy, it's still uh, it's still bad in a way of uh, we're still completely locked down and we still have a curfew from uh, you know nine o'clock in the evening mm. till uh, what is it five or six in the morning. So yeah, there's absolutely nothing going on. Nothing. Bars are closed. Restaurants are closed. Yeah, so it's really bad. It's really bad. Like like I think it's probably all over Europe. You know. So yeah, crap. Because we cannot play live shows still. You know. <laughs> no, I so, know. Before the rest. For the rest, yeah, you know, healthy, the whole band is healthy, uh, and all their loved ones as well, so that's a good thing. That's the main thing. Uh, so thanks for asking, I hope, no. hope you're doing well as well. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So you guys have released the monster album that is, you know what, saying this word is so difficult for me, Necrosaurus, okay, back in January. Perfect. Yeah, back in January. It's a classic death metal record that is exactly what I wanted from it when I knew you were releasing a new album. It's your heaviest yet, still death, doom, but a little thrash and, dare I say, melodic in places, a complete buffet of metal. Yeah, you can you can say it like that. Yeah, I guess, I guess. I mean, it was not it was not intentionally the way it came out, you know, with with the thinking of okay, we're going to make a a mix like that. It's just that you know how the songwriting developed, mm. and for funny enough, like in the end, we said, well, it seems to us that we actually slowed down a little bit, you know, in in the overall, overall thing. But uh, yeah, well, there's all kinds of different opinions about it. Some say okay, we turn faster. Other ones say okay, yeah. you turn more doom. But it's really cool to hear all these, you know, different various reactions and uh, overall. Um, yeah, it got really welcomed well, you know, everywhere. So, Great yeah, it's ab- absolutely, um, yeah, fantastic response. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so, uh, completely chuffed with it. So, this oh. this album is a is a pandemic baby. You know, how is it recording during the pandemic? Was there a noticeable difference the previous studio sessions? Did it help it or hinder it? Nah, I mean, the recordings themselves were just basically as, you know, they always take place with us but you know it was just really sad that normally when you meet each other as a band you know you really want to hug each other like beers you know mm-hmm. you know you're doing yeah. and all that that's really good so yeah actually we really had to um because we were in somebody else's studio you know it's not part of the band of tom and we mm-hmm. had to respect his rules as well yeah so yeah we had to take uh we had to keep a bit different a distance from each other like you know the normal uh, regular rules with it so that was a bit of a weird one but for the rest it didn't i mean it didn't really um had an impact on the recordings themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, of course, the way to get there, because it was really in the middle of the first lockdown in the Netherlands, and the, the streets yeah. was just completely deserted. You know, yeah. I had the feeling when I went there, like Jesus, this is like like a scenario from The Walking <laughs> Dead or something. You know, it's like really, yeah. it's really weird. You know, so it was a weird one to do, but um, yeah, I think because of you know all the extra time that we had, because all the shows were pulled. You know, then mm-hmm. we we couldn't we couldn't play live, so we said okay, might as well use the time available to our best advantage and, and start recording. So yeah, we had more, we had more time to focus on all that, mm. which I think helped in the end for the, for the end product. Absolutely. I mean, I was going to say the mix of the album is superb. I believe you changed the technical team behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We did. Cause usually, I mean, the last, the, the three albums, the three previous albums, we all did with Dan Svano, you know, and yeah. we had not, of course, nothing against Dan because he did every time he did a fantastic job. Yeah. But we just, then we noticed that there were so many bands all of a sudden, like, you know, uh, that, that that Dan do the mixing also, that we thought, well, maybe for us now it's time, it, you know, time to change. We're not, we're, I mean, we're, um, we're not followers, you know, so no, no. we thought to ourselves, like, well, why not try a couple of other ones out and then just send them a track, see what they can, what they come up with. And, uh, yeah, Sebastian Levermann, the German, was, uh, yeah, he was doing, he was coming up with the best one. Um, and we were really enthusiastic about it. And funny enough, uh, he's like a, himself. He's like in, in a power metal band. He's more like a power metal yeah, mixer. But, yeah. uh, so, but for him, it was like a kind of a small dream come true because he's also into death metal. Not, not you know, like the really, ex- like the, the the real fast stuff or something. But more like the bands that you know, that Asphyxes or Bullfrog or maybe Benedict, that kind of old school stuff. So for him, that was a. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it was was like a kind of a desire, you know, like to be able to mix a band like us. So he put everything into it, what he had, and yeah, I think that worked out fine. Apart from the fact that uh, that that it was really the whole cooperation with him was fantastic. Yeah, it was patient. Yeah. Uh, the whole communication went fantastic. So yeah, the boys did a great job with him. 
and Absolutely. we're pleased afterwards more and more than it's, it's even it turned out really a lot better than we expected yes. really it's a monster of an album uh, it's a killer <laughs> thank you, it's a thank killer. you. Lyrically, what's the inspiration? I mean, tracks like The Soul Cure is Death is literally a horror show of a song. It's terrifying if you read the lyrics. And no more terrifying than the Botox explosion. Then you have Three Years of Famine. It's a complete chocolate box of lyrical meanings. How do you get writing? Um, well, the thing is that because I read research a lot, you know, and, and, and apart from that, you know, I like to watch some, some like, you know, different kind of documentaries yeah. on TV sometimes. So, you know, I've got a lot of input from all kinds of things, even like the modern day news, whatever you want to yeah. uh, mention. Yeah. So uh, as soon as I've got an idea, I write, I take a couple of notes, you know, and I write it down and I just keep it there somewhere on the shelf in case Paul comes up with some, with some music for which I think, and we all think then, okay, that will fit, you know? Mm -hmm. the, so you, the lyrics really have to fit the, the music also. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, for this album, you, you, you know, Paul came just with a couple of things which I said, okay, you know, like Molten Black Earth, for example, I was, okay, this is like an enormous tank battle yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, great job. You know, and, and, and Three Years of Famine was just, yeah, you know, I read, I read, a, I was, I, I did two, I read two biographies of Mao, you know, Mao yeah. Zedong, the, the, yeah. the, the Chinese uh, dictator cool. is what we're going to call him. Yeah. And, um, so I read about this, this, um, this so-called, uh, what was that, a great leap forward, which is, more or less like a great leap backward <laughs> and uh yeah it was like on the country you know in the country there were like millions and millions of chinese people like really dying horribly of um of hunger mm. and uh, like starving and i thought this is just, just this is just so horrible and then when paul came with the song i just explained to him like well he said all right if i write about that because this is really like um yeah it's really like um you know tragic everything you know it's mm -hmm. like a yeah, yeah a terrible story so you say yeah fine and then it just fit together so that's how it that's how it goes you know i just i can just pick uh all kinds of topics from what i have and just all i have to do is like wait for, for paul to come with the uh yeah with the good music to, to, to actually fit it in yeah. with you know? So, so you write before the music even comes. So, you've got an idea of what songs you want to write about if the right track comes through. Uh, no, I always finish the lyrics once the songs are finished, oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and the whole, the whole arrangement. But uh, there's always, like I said, there's always a, a couple of words here and there that I wrote mm -hmm. down, you know, about the topic. And once, um, once Paul comes with, you know, with the final end result and with the final composition and the arrangement that we do as a whole, with, as a band on the whole. That's when I say, okay, now I can start really writing about the the, the yeah. specific topic. And of course, while doing so, then I'll go back to the books that I need or do some little bit of extra research because I, you know, I really want to write, uh, yeah, and just you know, come up with the facts if if it is uh, something like a you know a certain historian event, a historical event or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Other, other other stories are just like a uh, fantasy, you know, like Necrosaurus or uh, Botox or, uh, uh, yeah, Soul Cure's Death. I mean, know? that's a big but swipe at the plastic surgery industry, right? Botox implosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just like, it's, I, I mean, they all look more, they all look worse after, don't they? Yeah. I mean, look at all these, look at these women, they look like bloody fish, you know, with their lips <laughs> like that, you know. And then, and then I saw the, there was, I had no idea where the hell I saw that. I, I think it was somewhere on TV when I was sapping, uh, probably in, in a commercial block in, in, in between a football match or something. Yeah. And then I saw, I have no idea what bloody channel it was, but all of a sudden I saw like girls laying there with her buttocks and there was like some glass bowl like on their buttocks, like sucking them. Oh, right. You know the flesh in. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is this bullshit? <laughs> and then they actually, and they actually explained that that um, it, it was um, meant to make their you know bums bigger, so Kim that Kardashian. It, it, yeah, I, yeah, exactly, <laughs> something like that. And I go like, come on, you know, it's, it's, what the hell are we? What the hell are we? And then, you know, it's all over bloody internet. People are photoshopping. People so, are, you know, I, you know, I just I go like, come on, just be happy the way you are. You know, you cannot. I mean, suppose you have an appointment with a guy somewhere, you know, whatever, or a guy with a girl, and both think, oh, they really look like that, and then they meet each other for real, they go like, God, it's a monster, you know? Like, so there's no... It's, there's, so it's not like that, but it's just that, you know, you just cheat everybody with all that bullshit, so and, there's no and basically yourself. There's no Martin demands when you have the band photo shoots, then, when you're demanding photoshopping of your your chiseled looks. Bloody hell, no, never. <laughs> I mean, there's even, there's even people that, like, someone asks me, why is he not dying his hair? You're like, what? You know, I'm getting older. You know, face the facts. Right. 
I'm great. That's right. Bloody hell, you know. <laughs> Imagine me, like, every few months that I have to, what, dye my hair again, stupid black or whatever, oh, just because I don't want to look there's, old. And come on. plenty it's of do that. ridiculous. There's plenty of do that. So, yeah, I know. It's bloody ridiculous. <laughs> so the album title, I just touched on it earlier. Where does it come from? When I first read it, when I first played uh, one of your tracks on my show, I, I thought it was like the Mexican word, like, necrelos or something like that. You know, I couldn't get it in the head. But then I realised it was like a rhinoceros. Can you help shed some light on it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was a rhinoceros, yeah. So I, I just fit. What the thing is that the, the the previous three albums that we had all had, and it was not on purpose, but we had like a Death of Blues Away, Death Hammer, and then Incoming yeah. Death. So we had like the word death in every in every album title. Yeah. So I got like, well, it's not a bad tradition. I said to the lads, but then I was like, yeah, but do that again on another one, you know. So then I thought, okay. Uh, in different languages. So Necros is, is well, it's in modern day Greek, but it's also like ancient Greek. Yeah. So I had that. So, okay, here is death in Greek, Necros. What am I going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So then I, you know, I was playing around with words and all. I look like, hey, rhinoceros, that's cool. So if I just glue <laughs> that, and I got necrosphorus. The only thing is, is, is that, what the hell is it? What am I going to do it's with a the damn thing? word. <laughs> yeah, so, so I said to the guys, like, okay, uh, to me, this sounds like a good album title. And they thought, oh, this is fantastic. But then I said, okay, the only thing is right now, I still don't have a clue what it's about. <laughs> you know, it's just, I just have the word. Great. Now I've got to figure out what the word is going to be. Great. But fortunately, you know, I, next to, to all the books and the stuff that I read, I also like... Um, yeah, certain like science, science fiction or, or fantasy comics or a lot of that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> I just had to think a story out of it. And yeah. I just came up with this, yeah, what is it? This massive, uh, gi gigantic entity, you know, somewhere in, well, you know, almost like Star Wars or something, yeah. you know, in some far distant universe. Right. I can picture it now. I can picture it There's now. Some, yeah, exactly. <laughs> something like that. And then he, you know, he, through all kinds of uh, adventures, he finally gets spewed out by a white hole in our universe and then well because we are like a very i see like fertile planet he goes straight to earth you know? yeah that's it, that's it. <laughs> so we're doomed <laughs> yeah <I'm> always <laughs> always doomed <laughs> so going back in history how did you join the band you went from pestilence to asphyx back in 1990 before the release of the rack how was it joining the band uh Can you remember that really... far back? yeah 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 <laughs> I, I, yeah i really remember that because <laughs> it was uh bob and me Bobby Nasfix, the drummer, the yeah. actually founder, actual founder of the band. Yeah. Uh, we were in great contact, you know, we were training tapes and, and you know, we, we met each other like every week, a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, and he was, he was just setting Asfix up, more or less. You know, it was like still really in its, uh, yeah, in its very primary stages. Mm. And so when he heard that I left Pestilence, and the first, the first one to call me was him. You know, how about it? I said, how about what? And he goes, well, I just, you know, want to meet us in the practice room and, said okay you know so I, I went in and then pfft, uh, you know eric uh, daniels he had his guitar so massively loud it was just insane <laughs> i was like this is just, this is just the way that i like it you know i mean my, my favorite bands when it comes to live volume we're always like motorhead and venom yeah so there you got the loudest and i go well this is this is a bit similar to it you know so i, I didn't hesitate i said oh this is cool plug that bass in and uh, let's go <laughs> cool. yeah so yeah it it went really fast yeah. I think I was not even two weeks out of pestilence. I returned from the yeah. US too when, uh, uh, yeah, when I joined Bob and Eric in the practice That's room. Cool. I think. And it's been a roller coaster journey over the years. The band's, uh, you know, it's broken up and it's reformed. You've left, you returned. Is you know, it must be comforting now that you've got a steady lineup. Uh, absolutely. And the funny is, the fun thing is, is that we realised that after the album, like, wow, guys, we did. Um, we did two albums in a row, you know, um, with this with the same lineup. Mm. That's like unique, you know, for a band like yes, things. So, yeah, no, we're we're really happy about it because, uh, yeah, after all these years and, and and so many changes and all that, we think we really we found like the right lineup. I mean, it's still sad that Bob couldn't continue, yeah. you know, because of his, uh, yeah, he made a choice, you know, to, mm. to for his family, which mm. is, you know, very understanding, and yeah. it should be like that, really. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean his replacement Husk, you know, uh, uh, he's, fan he's a he's a fantastic not only a you know a great drummer, but he's also like a fantastic guy. You know, he really turned into a brother, and yeah. Bob still likes him as well, so he's a perfect replacement. Yeah, and 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 yeah, it, it just works. Uh, it works great. It can't be better than it is now. I mean, we're not just we're not just a band, you know. We're brothers, really. We're that's family. It should be. That's the way. It yeah, exactly, be. exactly. And I think that that's what people see also when we play live, mm. and that there's not just a bunch of. Uh, you know, like guys like 
around one person or you know just there to to oh well maybe we can get some extra money by doing a show or something you know yeah. but no no we, we really like to, i mean that's that's why it's so hard yeah, right for now. us right now because mm. we really like a live band you course. know but that's that's the but that's of course it is a bonus you know when you have a steady lineup and especially when when you have that uh yeah that, that atmosphere that you have in a band like uh, like we have yeah, yeah. Awesome. so you have one of the most unique death metal voices out there how did you find your style i mean how many sigs and boozes it take do you have endorsements from marlborough and amstel <laughs> <laughs> no i've got no i'm, I'm not like the cowboy really <laughs> 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 I do. No, I, I do smoke a shit lot of tobacco. I must say, but it's like I, I, I hand roll because that's how you grow up with that in the Netherlands. But yeah. unfortunately, yeah. no, I have no endorsement. I should get one actually, because <laughs> <laughs> it's really expensive over here now. I, I, I mean, when it comes to to, to to the state of the, I mean, I just yeah, I, I like to drink a lot of beers, you know, and sometimes stronger stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard for me to quit smoking and let that be. Uh, let them be like the last five that's left, you know, for me. Yeah. It's, you know, there's worse things. So, uh, oh, yeah. so I, I really don't do anything special except for that I, um, yeah, I can train my voice whenever I want. You yeah. know, I can just do that here at home. And, uh, I was going to say, yeah, you know, does, it, does it take a lot of practice to maintain the, th the throat? And do you have any specific pre show rituals? Mm, show wise, no. No, it's just sometimes best. people just sometimes people just watch me and you know as stunned you're like what and because I just go I think one hour before the show I just make one scream you know I do like yeah. and then I go okay it's all right it's good it's fine I'm fine <laughs> and that's all they and then they go like that's all is warming up I go yeah I don't need it because um, I can already warm up at home yeah you know be uh, like the week before. Mm. And and so you know I don't need to, to to warm up, and yes I can I can yeah I can just yeah I can I can warm up my voice at home anytime I want. Mm. So sometimes it's, I just I just want to do it. You know I just yeah. feel like uh, oh yeah it's cool. You know let's put on some new songs or even some material that we never play live. You know yeah, just for cool. the fun of it, yeah. and just to, to yeah to keep it in um, to keep it in shape. It's like um yeah you know it's like comparable to a football. I mean as yeah. a football player if he doesn't train then well you, you can you, you, you know you're gonna lose a match that's for sure as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So that's that's how it is, and I, I still love to do it though. And I'm lucky that after all the years that it's, that I can still maintain can it. Do it, yeah, exactly. So just but there's no there's no throat cancer or problem with vocal cords or whatever, you know. No, yeah. funny, weirdly enough, I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just to, me yeah. so just to touch upon your past with Bolt Thrower, one of the one of my go to bands as a young teenager. You did a couple of tours with them. Is it a fond memory? Oh yeah, it was was it was an honor, you know. I mean, uh, I'm one of the uh, few men in the world, you know, that can say like, oh, I was, I was on two two tours with both yeah. and and also a non-Englishman, you know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I mean, that was that was like. It was always like fun in the band because I was, uh, yeah, you know, being the only foreign band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So, yeah, that was rough. But, I mean, you know, the cool thing is that Dutch and, and, and English have a kind of this really uh, harsh slagging of humor. Yeah. But, you know, Banter. both countries is quite, quite normal. So, uh, that, that, that wasn't the thing, you know. It was really cool, in fact. And sometimes, yeah. yeah, you got these fantastic jokes, even live or on stage or... Yeah. You know, but it was it was uh, it was absolutely an honor, and every you know every night that you know that you you go on stage with that, you just it's just very something very very special because yeah. you know you have that you have that metal war machine behind you and mm. you are fronting them. Yeah, you know, it's just really really. Uh, yeah, it's you, yeah. You have to, you had to be there, you know, to, just to just to describe that. But it was just fantastic, yeah. and uh, I still cherish that a lot. And I'm just still glad also that uh, yeah, we're still in good contact, you know, here and there. Mm, that's yeah. good. Uh, that's good. Yeah. So I've got a good idea where you get your where you draw your influences from, and I've read that it's Venom and Kiss from your early years. But what guilty pleasures does Martin have? Ple what do you mean, like music wise? Yeah, guilty pleasures. Yeah, do you like some kind of? Do you like a bit of rock set? Or do you what kind of you know? Oh, music? No, bloody hell, no, 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 no. That I'm more into, um, no, that I'm more into thing. I mean, yeah, but it's still like very related to metal. I'm more into blues, you know. Then oh, yeah. I mean, if I have my time, let's just say like you do the rec you, you finish all the recordings of an album, and then of course you you, you work through the first uh, show of that, so you have to learn all the lyrics out of your head, so that album is on yeah. every day, hour yeah. after hour after hour, and you go like, okay, now I'm really fed up with metal. Mm. You know, I can't hear it anymore. So then you take a break from it and then for me that's you know things like blues and that can um 
there can be like a it's a wide range of blues in fact you know it can be Stevie Ray Vaughan it can be yeah. John Lee Hooker it can be it can also be stuff like Chuck Berry yeah. or, or uh, which is more rock and roll or even in the 20s you know like things like um, yeah, Bessie Smith or yeah, uh, uh, yeah Robert Johnson you know uh, Blind Boy Fuller could be anything but it's, it's, it's really like this kind of raw kind of blues you know yeah. I mean je- Jesse wise it's more Billy Holiday I like her yeah. as well but yeah. that's more that's more jazz but yeah, I, like yeah I, th- I think that's the only I mean yeah I'm not uh, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed by that but I like it not. because really, it's, it's really good music and, and uh, apart from the fact that it's the founding blues, fathers it's the founding fathers yeah absolutely yeah, and, and, uh, and, and the thing is of course like when I was a kid uh, I always wanted to know like where, where where does hard rock and heavy metal you know what am I listening to mm. what does it come from and then you just yeah you end up there mm. you know it's a simple that's that's the journey that you make then in history yeah. like from the spiritual blues to the rock and roll yeah and then all of a sudden Jimi Hendrix and after Jimi Hendrix boom you know there you go yeah. you got like MC5 Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple or Black Sabbath mm. and that's it, it so is. so yeah it's uh, that's blues yeah and yeah sometimes some other stuff like. Yeah, like surf guitar crap, you know, like that. You know. It's just for the fun of it. Yeah, or summer music. Or when it, when yeah. It, when the sun comes out. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, like yeah. So yeah. Hy- hypothetically, if it hadn't been for Asphyx, what band in history would you have loved to have fronted? Damn. Probably MC5 then. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, cause a crazy bunch, you know, like preaching free drugs and sex, like in public and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but then, I mean, just back in those days, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of I mean, course. That's, that, that was that was a question was about, right? Well, no, I was talking about modern day. Any time you like, I mean, it's like what band, what modern day band, any band that you think, oh, God, uh, I'd love to. Have been okay. Like. Yeah, well, modern day band. Anything. No, I, 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 I think, I mean, yeah, they, they will never return back again, but I think it would only be Bullthrower, you know, it's Bullthrower yeah. and it's Asphyx, and then uh, uh, I don't think that I ever... <laughs> You've ticked those <laughs> no. boxes. <laughs> no, not really, no, because, you know, I don't want to, come on, you know, I don't want to front like Judas Priest, you know, no, I'm, I'm not, not. Sa- sa- sounding like, not sounding like Helford, and, and with Kiss, no, I'm not going to wear makeup on my face, <laughs> and do that. For them, for them, it was cool. Yeah. And then now you've got this whole storm of got those are kids like wearing all kinds of similar makeup as kids, but well, uh, it was no no way for Gene to sue them all in court, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, recently, I've got to touch upon it. I've got to mention the tragic death this week of LG. Total punch in the gut, right? Oh yes, yeah, that's still a bad. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, we heard it? I think it was Monday night. Mm, that's right. Monday, Monday evening, and I came with it. Yes, it was. Uh, I mean. We were still hoping, you know, that, that he would get better. Mm. And so, in a way, it, it, it didn't come as a, as a complete surprise. You know, you know, he was very, we knew he was very ill. Mm. But still, you were just, you know, you had this, you had this hope that, uh, that, 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 that you know, that he was able to, to, to make through. And uh, mm, it didn't. And yeah, it's like I said to everybody. I mean, I knew him quite well. And, and always when we saw each other, uh, you know, we had great fun and, and mm. You know, drinking together, making jokes. I mean, he was very, uh, he was a very sympathetic uh, guy, you know. He was not just a really good, good grunter and also a pioneer in the death metal Absolutely. genre, you know, with, yeah. with nihilist and the untuned stuff. But, um, I, he was also, he's also a very nice person, yeah. you know, and, and I said to a lot of people, you know, because there was, of course, like a lot of messages coming my way about it and, and I really also wanted to share my feelings about it. Uh, I, I said to everybody, you know, he was a friend of all of us, mm. really. You know, and it's, it's, for me, it's a really big loss, a really big loss. Not just, you know, not just as a good man and a friend, but an older brother, right, that were, but also for the metal scene, you know, in general. Mm. Really. I mean, he was only forty-nine. Come on, exactly. You know? I know it's, I mean, it's I'm wrong. fifty-four, you know, uh, so yeah, he's, he's he's like bloody almost like six, five or six years younger than I am. Mm. You know, it's tragic, absolutely tragic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's very, very tragic. You know? So, uh, your proudest moment in your career, what pinnacle moment in your career made you say, "Yeah, I've achieved it"? The proudest time. And that was actually outside the bands, I guess. Yeah, I was in one room with four hot Brazilian girls. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, it just it just came up to me. I mean, sometimes it, <laughs> sometimes you got these things that it come come into your head. You know, they've got nothing to do with it because that happened in a time where I was in no band at all. Mm. You know, so I was I was even that was like w- the worst rock and roll period in my life. Really, I was doing bloody everything in the weekends. You know, yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know how I ended up like that, but um, yeah, it happened. No, yeah. no, it was it was some world championship. That was it. And then she had like 
girlfriends invited and when Brazil scored, they just, first of all, they took their, their t-shirts off. That happened first. <laughs> and then when they won, then all of a sudden everybody was naked in the room. And they're like, whoa, this is cool. Yeah, well, from one thing came the other. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so before you go, I need to ask what tours are tentatively planned? You know, what's, uh, what's happening there? Yeah, well, uh, we basically... Well, in waiting, you know, like uh, how things are going to develop. Yeah. So nothing, you know? nothing in the uh, things in the pipeline, or oh yeah, there's a lot in the pipeline. But Great. you know, what can happen is that yeah. a lot of things get cancelled again. Canceled. Yeah. You know? So, but we already have, uh, like we did last end of last year, a bit. Uh, we already have offers from what they called so-called Corona shows in Germany. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we have a restricted amount of people, right. and uh, you know they have to wear the you know the the, the, the mouth protection and all that. Yeah. So there is. Uh, yeah, that's, I think these shows may happen because they started already like in May mm. and by that time, because now they introduced the self-tests in Germany as well so people can actually go to the entrance, uh, test themselves quickly and just show the result, all right, you know, I'm fine, <laughs> you know, and or maybe even they all are, uh, wow. how you say that, uh, vaccinated maybe, mm. you know, just have to see, but... Yeah. Yeah, we can only we can only wait. You know how things will develop. I think maybe some smaller festivals could take place, but they're already yeah. cancelling a few real no. big ones in Germany already. Like uh, Rock am Ring is is cancelled yeah, and uh, downloaders as well and all sorts. Yeah, and yeah, uh, so, it's really, so it's, yeah, it's sad because yeah, what, you know, um, we just want to promote, promote this album. And yeah, we can't. I was going to say, what new tracks are you excited to play live? Still have to figure it out. <laughs> it's nothing. Nothing. You know. Nothing from the record that you're going, I can't wait to play, I can't wait to get the, the, the crowd's wow, participation. Them. All of them. All of them. All of them. I, mean, we, I mean, we did actually like a live stream, you know, like a release yeah. live stream yeah. in January. Yeah. And uh, so we played all the songs of, the, of, of that album live, except for Three Years of Famine because of the uh, so much melody lines, you know, yeah. that Paul could quickly implement that with his guitar. But mm. we will work on it. You know, because we really want to play that song live one day. Of course. But uh, yeah, all all, all, the, all the songs were just a pleasure to do. You know, it's always with the new material that you want to. Yeah. <laughs> the problem for us is, of course, if it's that was a release show, and that's why it was yeah. um, announced like that, because then people will understand. Okay, they're going to play almost like, the entire album. Mm. But for other shows, you know, if you do a show in the UK or if you do a show in Germany, you know, like a regular one, yeah, you have to combine it with all the old material. So that's going to be really tough. Yeah. To, uh, to be made you know like to what we're going to do mm. if it was up to me it would say okay you know we're going to do we're going to do two shows you know one of the new album and one uh, tomorrow like another one with all the more older yeah. material yeah, <laughs> right. tough, tough choice uh, it's not for me yeah. to, to, to or demand that unfortunately yeah well Martin it's been great to chat thanks for joining me on the show and I cannot wait to see you out on the road thank you very much it was a pleasure to uh, chatting with you too uh, sorry <laughs> 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 that was indeed like um, about 40 years of smoking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cigarettes, cigarettes, uh, tobacco. Uh, wow, well, hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thanks a lot indeed. Oh. <laughs> it was really a pleasure. It was a, was a good one. <laughs> <laughs>